Little Zoe had never imagined that her simple gesture of compassion, offering her sandwich to a homeless man would culminate in the unexpected arrival of two police officers at her doorstep. I'm sorry officers but there appears to be some misunderstanding, Charles Zoe's father asserted to the police convinced it was just a mix-up. Given that Zoe was merely eight years old, Charles couldn't fathom what interest the police could possibly have in his daughter. Despite his disbelief, the officers were adamant about speaking with Zoe and Charles, unable to deny their request, let out a deep sigh, welcomed them inside, and called for Zoe to come downstairs. She had recently returned from school and was settled in her room, engrossed in her homework. As he waited for her, Charles faced the officers, his arms crossed, his demeanor demanding clarity on their unexpected visit. He felt he was entitled to an explanation. The officers responded with vague hints, implying that it was better for Charles to remain uninformed. Frustrated by their evasiveness, Charles was about to demand more precise information when he heard Zoe's gentle voice calling from the staircase, Yes, Daddy. Her eyes were wide with apprehension at the sight of the officers. Hey, sweetie, can you come down here, please? These men will be leaving soon, but they need to ask you a few questions first, he reassured her. She nodded and stayed close to her father, seeking comfort in his presence. One of the officers who introduced himself as Officer Craig crouched down to Zoe's level. Hi, Zoe, thank you for taking a moment to talk with me, he started gently. He inquired about her usual route to and from school, and to everyone's surprise, disclosed that he was aware she had given her lunch to a homeless man the previous day. Charles was taken aback by this revelation as he was unaware of his daughter's charitable act, but he managed to maintain his composure in front of the officers. After Officer Craig had collected the information he needed, he thanked Zoe and promptly left with his colleague. Charles watched them leave, noting their solemn expressions and feeling a sense of unease about the entire encounter. Meanwhile, Zoe returned to her room, leaving Charles deep in thought about the peculiar visit. He gently closed the door behind him and made his way to Zoe's room, eager to understand the full extent of her interaction with the homeless man. Zoe, the officer mentioned that you shared your lunch with a man living on the street. Could you tell me a bit more about that? Charles asked, wanting to hear the story from Zoe herself and understand the implications of her kind deed were a crucial opportunity for bonding and discussing important matters. As they approached the usual spot where Zoe had encountered the homeless man, Erin's eyes scanned the area with a mix of curiosity and caution. She hoped to catch a glimpse of the man to assess him herself and ensure her daughter's safety. Charles, on the other hand, had spent the morning at home, reflecting on the conversation he had with Zoe the previous day. He admired his daughter's kind heart but knew the importance of teaching her about the complexities of the world. While he trusted his daughter's judgment, he couldn't help but feel a tinge of worry. He decided to discuss further with Zoe about the boundaries of helping strangers, planning to reinforce the conversation they had about safety. Meanwhile, Aaron and Zoe continued their walk to school. Zoe chatted animatedly about her latest art project, momentarily distracting Aaron from her concerns. However, as they neared the school, Aaron's attention returned to the matter at hand. She remained vigilant, watching for the homeless man, yet he was nowhere to be seen. This both relieved and unnerved Aaron, as she wondered about the man's whereabouts and well-being. Upon their arrival at school, Aaron hugged Zoe goodbye, reminding her to be observant and cautious. She watched her daughter enter the school building, feeling a mix of pride and lingering concern. Aaron then decided to speak with Zoe's teacher, Miss S. Thompson, to express her concerns and to ask if she could keep a subtle watch over Zoe, especially during recess when children were outside. Miss S. Thompson, understanding the delicacy of the situation, agreed to keep an eye on Zoe and reassured Aaron that the school prioritized the safety of its students. Feeling somewhat comforted by the teacher's assurances, Aaron left the school planning to return earlier for pickup. As the day progressed, Charles and Aaron both remained contemplative about the situation, 
recognizing that while they wanted to nurture Zoe's compassionate nature, they also needed to educate her about the complexities of human interactions, especially in unpredictable environments like city streets. They planned to discuss this further as a family to ensure Zoe understood the balance between kindness and caution. That evening during dinner, the family engaged in a heartfelt discussion about the importance of helping others while also staying safe. Zoe listened intently, absorbing her parents' advice and sharing her feelings about helping the homeless man. Charles and Aaron listened, pleased with their daughter's maturity and her willingness to learn and adapt. This incident, though small, served as a significant learning experience for the family, reinforcing their values and the importance of open communication and understanding in navigating the challenges of the world around them. As the school came into view, Zoe glanced up at her mother with a serious expression. I gave him my sandwich because he needed it more than I did, she declared. Her mother, Erin, was moved by her daughter's empathy, though it was tinged with a slight unease. She hugged Zoe tightly, appreciating their honest communication. As they neared the usual resting place of the homeless man, they often saw, Zoe remarked on his unexpected absence. He's not there today, mom, she observed, her forehead creasing in concern. It was quite atypical for him not to be there, as Zoe had grown accustomed to seeing him on their daily walks. Aaron silently acknowledged the vacant spot with a nod, quietly harboring her own concerns. Joey's worry seemed to dissipate as they drew closer to her school, her attention captured by a vibrant poster heralding the imminent science fair. Look, Mom, we're starting our projects next week, she exclaimed with a spark of excitement, her earlier unease momentarily shelved as she eagerly shared her ideas for the project, her enthusiasm undiminished. Upon arriving at the school, Aaron embraced Zoe tightly, planting a gentle kiss on her forehead. Have a great day, sweetie, she uttered warmly, her smile tender. She lingered briefly, watching as Zoe ascended the steps and merged with the throng of students entering the lively school building, her heart swelling with pride yet tinged with a persistent worry for her daughter's well-being. Once Zoe was safely inside, Aaron felt compelled to return to the spot where the homeless man usually sat. Her curiosity now heightened. She pondered his absence, hoping that no misfortune had come his way. The area was unusually still, the typical sounds of the morning city life echoing faintly around the now vacant space. She paused, absorbing the scene and the unusual quietude before moving on. Approaching the location where Zoe last spotted him, Aaron uncovered a tent skillfully concealed behind some shrubbery. With caution she approached calling out a gentle hello but was met with silence. The tent, rustling in the gentle morning breeze seemed deserted. A peek inside revealed a lack of personal belongings or signs of recent habitation, suggesting it had been unoccupied for some time. With her heart rate slightly elevated, Erin quickened her steps, feeling the weight of unseen eyes upon her. She cast a wary glance over her shoulder, scanning the street. The usual morning crowd continued their routines, oblivious to her concern, yet nothing outwardly appeared out of place. Still, the sensation of being watched made her uneasy. Driven by an instinctive urge for safety, Erin hurried toward her home. With a heightened sense of alertness, she scanned her surroundings examining every unfamiliar face and dark shadow, yet nothing seemed out of place. Despite the apparent normalcy, a pervasive feeling of unease enveloped her, clinging to her like a cold, damp fog. She attempted to reassure herself that it was all just a figment of her imagination, that there was indeed nothing to fear. However, the unsettling feeling stubbornly lingered. As Erin continued her brisk walk, out of the corner of her eye she thought she caught a glimpse of a shadow flitting behind her. Startled she whipped around, her heart pounding only to find nothing there. It's just your imagination, she whispered to herself, trying hard to dispel the creeping paranoia. Taking a deep breath, she pressed forward, though the empty streets now seemed ominously vast and unwelcoming. Upon reaching her home, Erin felt a profound sense of relief as she closed and locked the door behind her. The familiar walls of her residence provided a comforting embrace, washing away the remnants of fear. She leaned against the door momentarily, allowing the security of her home to seep in and soothe her frazzled nerves. 
It felt immensely reassuring to be back in her own space, shielded from the unsettling sensations that had marred her morning. Settling down at her desk, Erin powered up her computer and began to tackle a stack of emails that demanded her attention. She plugged in her earbuds, prepping herself for a day filled with backed, back virtual meetings. As she delved into her work, the eerie experience of the morning gradually faded into the background. Her focus shifted entirely to managing her daily tasks as she navigated through graphs and correspondence, the rhythmic tapping of her keyboard filling the usually silent atmosphere of her home office. In the midst of a virtual meeting, a loud knock suddenly echoed through the house, jolting Aaron from her concentrated state. Her heart raced as the sound broke her flow and reignited the anxiety from earlier in the day. Muting her microphone and pausing for a brief moment to collect herself, Erin cautiously approached the window to investigate the source of the disturbance. Peering out she carefully scanned her front yard, her eyes darting from one corner to another searching for any sign of who might have knocked. The interruption had not only disrupted her presentation, but had also brought back the morning's anxiety with a renewed intensity. As she patrolled her quiet suburban street, her eyes narrowed, intently scanning for any hint of movement or unfamiliar figures that could explain the earlier disturbance. Her fingers brushed against the curtain, poised to pull it aside at the slightest indication of danger. From her vantage point, everything seemed as tranquil as usual, the neighborhood wrapped in its typical serenity. Yet, she couldn't shake off a pervasive sense of vigilance that tingled her instincts, keeping them sharply alert. Her attention was abruptly drawn to a sudden flurry of movement at the periphery of her property. Squinting to get a better look, her breath caught in her throat as she recognized the figure of the homeless man Zoe had been helping. He was making a swift exit from her yard, his movements quick and deliberate, almost as if he was aware he'd been spotted. Her heart raced with recognition and adrenaline surged through her veins. Without a second thought, Aaron bolted through the door, determined to catch up with him. She remembered the man from the vivid description Zoe had provided. She dashed down her driveway, her eyes firmly fixed on the swiftly retreating figure. The morning air was cool against her skin as she moved quickly, each step driven by a blend of concern and urgency, trying to close the gap between them. Despite her relentless effort, the man maintained a brisk pace, his long strides quickly covering the ground. Aaron did her best to keep up, but he soon rounded a corner and disappeared from view. Out of breath, she halted at the corner, her eyes darting around the empty streets in search of him, but he was nowhere to be seen. With a heavy sigh, she came to terms with the fact that for now the pursuit had ended. Though frustrated, her determination remained unshaken as she made her way back home. As Aaron walked, her mind buzzed with plans and theories, meticulously piecing together the peculiar events of the day. She was already crafting a strategy, her resolve to unearth the truth stronger than ever. Once home, she settled into a chair at the kitchen table, a place that seemed designed for deep thought and strategic planning. It was clear to her that she needed to discuss these developments with Charles immediately, given his eagerness to be involved and with their daughter's safety now a pressing concern. She picked up her phone, her fingers tapping anxiously on the table surface as she dialed Charles's number. As soon as he answered, Aaron didn't waste a moment. Charles, you need to hear what just happened, she said urgently, prepared to delve into the details. She vividly described her encounter with a seemingly homeless man outside their house and his rapid departure when she approached. Her voice conveyed the seriousness of the situation, ensuring Charles grasped the full magnitude of what had occurred. After discussing the unsettling incident, Aaron and Charles agreed that it would be prudent for Charles to pick up Zoe from school to guarantee her safety. Given the day's alarming developments, their daughter's well-being was now their top priority, and they were unwilling to take any risks regarding her security. Charles left his workplace early, his mind a mix of anxiety and resolve, fully aware of the importance of keeping Zoe safe. On his way to the school he spoke with Aaron again, discussing additional safety measures. They concluded that Zoe should not walk home alone for the time being. We need to make sure she's always safe, Charles stated emphatically, with Aaron in complete agreement. There was no room for lack safety measures. 
Their daughter's security was their utmost concern. Upon his arrival at the school, Zoe greeted him with a joyful, oblivious smile. She happily chatted about her day, blissfully unaware of her parents' growing anxieties. Charles listened, his heart heavy with the thought of eventually having to inform her of the situation, yet he chose to preserve her innocence for a little while longer. As they walked back to their home, Charles managed a smile in response to his wife's warm grin, concealing his inner turmoil. Upon their arrival, the house provided a familiar comfort, but the atmosphere quickly shifted as Charles shared an update with Aaron. I took another look on my way home, he said, his eyes wandering to the view outside the window. He hasn't shown up at his usual spot today. His tone was laced with concern, hinting at the deeper layers of worry this absence brought to the surface. The man's unexpected disappearance that evening was unsettling, sparking a flurry of speculative reasons among them. Zoe, sensitive to the shift in her parents' mood, voiced her worries with a tremble in her voice, please, make sure he's not hurt. Her eyes shimmered with compassion as she recalled the homeless man's grateful smile when she had handed him her lunch earlier. Her plea was a poignant reminder of her deep empathy and concern for his welfare, resonating deeply as her parents processed their own growing anxieties. Despite Zoe's sincere worries, Charles felt a pressing need to prioritize their family's security. With a resolve hardened by the situation, he decided to contact the police for assistance. He believed that understanding more about the homeless man's circumstances might not only clarify his disappearance but also ensure the safety of everyone involved. Picking up the phone with a calm yet determined hand, he dialed the local precinct. I need to speak to the officer in charge, he stated clearly, ready to provide any details necessary to help protect his family and possibly aid the man who had so touched Zoe's heart. As he waited for a response, a surge of adrenaline coursed through him. He approached cautiously, acutely aware of the delicate situation. His earlier conversation with the police had revealed that Eddie was entangled in a series of serious legal issues that not only endangered him but could potentially impact those around him, including Charles's family. Charles had initially contacted the police because he noticed an unusual pattern. Eddie was frequently loitering near his house, often engaging in brief, albeit seemingly harmless, conversations with his daughter Zoe. Concerned, Charles sought clarity from the local law enforcement, only to discover the gravity of the situation. The officers, while initially reluctant to share details, had eventually disclosed that Eddie was at the center of an investigation tied to a string of complex crimes in the community. This revelation had shaken Charles to his core. His mind reeled from the implications, understanding now that his family might inadvertently become involved in a dangerous scenario. That knowledge had spurred him into taking immediate action, despite the risks. He couldn't afford to delay, knowing that every moment counted. Now, as Charles stood in the shadowy park, he found Eddie looking wary and worn, a stark contrast to the person Charles remembered from their brief encounters. Eddie, Charles called out, his voice steady but filled with concern, we need to talk. It's important. Eddie, recognizing Charles, seemed to hesitate for a moment before nodding slowly, his expression a mixture of relief and resignation. As they sat on a nearby bench, Charles explained his conversation with the police, carefully watching Eddie's reactions. It was clear that Eddie was deeply embroiled in trouble, but there was also a sense of regret emanating from him. The discussion that followed was intense and fraught with urgency. Charles expressed his concerns not only for Eddie's well-being but also for the safety of his own family. He urged Eddie to consider turning himself in, offering to help him contact a lawyer and navigate the legal complexities ahead. Eddie listened, the weight of his situation evident in his slumped posture and the deep sighs that punctuated the silence between them. As the night deepened and the park emptied, Charles's resolve strengthened. He knew the path ahead would be challenging, but his actions tonight could potentially steer the situation towards a resolution, hopefully avoiding further complications. The stakes were indeed high, but Charles felt a moral obligation to intervene, driven by a blend of fear for his family's safety and a compassionate desire to help Eddie find a way out of his predicament. As the surge of adrenaline coursed through his veins, 
Charles parked his vehicle discreetly and advanced with cautious steps, mindful not to alarm the young man. His heart thudded against his chest, the stakes of the encounter weighing heavily on him. As he edged nearer, Eddie, sensing another's presence, stiffened, his muscles coiled for a swift getaway. Eddie, Charles's voice was a gentle murmur in the quiet, a deliberate attempt to pacify. Despite the softness of his call, Eddie retreated a few paces, the impulse to flee starkly apparent. Undeterred, Charles picked up his pace, resolute in his decision not to let Eddie disappear from his life once more. His mind was laser-focused on diminishing the space between them. Upon catching up, Charles introduced himself with calm authority, Eddie, I'm Zoe's father. The mention of Zoe caused Eddie to halt, curiosity overtaking his initial wariness. Seeing this shift, Charles took the opportunity to close the distance between them, his relief tangible as he noted Eddie's slightly relaxed posture. With gentle conviction, Charles outlined his purpose, emphasizing his non-threatening intentions. I just want to ensure you're okay, he reassured Eddie, his voice imbued with sincerity. This seemed to resonate with Eddie, who now listened with diminishing fear, his earlier apprehension ebbing away as Charles spoke. The visible understanding in Eddie's eyes bolstered Charles's confidence, fostering a nascent connection between them. After a short yet significant conversation, Eddie gave a deliberate nod, conveying his consent to go with Charles. With a gesture of genuine concern, Charles said, I'll take you to the hospital to ensure everything is fine, as he graciously opened the passenger door of his car. Hesitating for a moment, Eddie then got into the vehicle, entrusting his well-being to Charles's assured help. Once both were securely inside, Charles set off for the hospital. He drove with a sense of urgency, his focus apparent in the way he constantly glanced at Eddie to check on him while skillfully maneuvering through the rapidly moving traffic. Each turn and every stop sign was approached with meticulous care, highlighting the immediate importance of getting Eddie the medical attention he needed without any delay. Approaching the vicinity of the hospital, Eddie looked over at Charles, his face etched with deep appreciation. In a soft, relieved voice, he murmured, thank you for helping me, the weight of his words filled with sincere thankfulness. I'm sorry if I caused any distress to your family. Understanding the weight of Eddie's words, Charles simply nodded, an unspoken agreement on the seriousness of the circumstance shared in their exchange. Just the day before, Eddie had been in this very hospital, receiving urgent care for a severe allergic reaction, a testament to the unexpected turns life could take. Zoe had made a sandwich that Eddie was eating when he suddenly experienced an adverse reaction. The medical team responded promptly, administering the necessary interventions to mitigate his symptoms. While Eddie was thankful for the swift medical attention, the potential cost of the treatment loomed large in his mind. Overwhelmed by the financial implications, he shared with Charles that he had chosen to leave the hospital soon after his condition stabilized, driven not by a fear of the hospital itself but by the daunting expenses associated with the care he had received. I just couldn't afford it, Eddie admitted, his voice tinged with worry. This confession shed light on his abrupt departure, highlighting his desperate attempts to evade a debt he felt he couldn't manage. Charles learned from the police that their search for Eddie wasn't to apprehend him but rather to deliver some uplifting news. They informed Eddie about a newly launched healthcare program tailored specifically for the homeless. This initiative was keen to locate him because it was designed to shoulder all his medical expenses, thus alleviating the stress of financial strain. The officers detailed that the program was part of a broader effort to enable homeless individuals access vital health services without the crippling fear of insurmountable costs. As Eddie absorbed this information, the burden of his worries began to dissipate, realizing that this could mark a significant turning point in his life. Overwhelmed with relief, he agreed to enroll in the program, grateful for the unexpected lifeline thrown his way. Feeling a profound sense of gratitude for this serendipitous turn of events, Eddie sat in the hospital, now more relaxed and hopeful about his future. He was appreciative of the assistance that had been made available to him as he neared the completion of his hospital care. With the right medical attention now assured and financial worries alleviated, Eddie's health improved remarkably, aiding his rapid recovery. 
Upon his discharge from the hospital, accompanied by Charles and Aaron, Eddie's demeanor had visibly transformed. His smile grew more radiant, and his strides became firmer and more assured, reflecting the clear, positive impact of receiving the necessary care and support he deserved. Charles and Aaron dedicated themselves to helping Eddie understand and manage the intricacies involved in applying for the new healthcare program. They were committed to ensuring he fully leveraged this transformative chance, guiding him through each step of the process to maximize the benefits that could significantly improve his quality of life. Charles and Aaron devoted many hours at their kitchen table, which doubled as a makeshift office, to assist Eddie in navigating his immediate needs. They meticulously filled out numerous forms and made several essential phone calls, fully committed to supporting Eddie in every possible way. Their support extended beyond healthcare. They also played a pivotal role in Eddie's job hunt. Utilizing their extensive network within the community and diligently scouring local job listings, they were instrumental in helping Eddie prepare for job interviews and polish his resume. Their concerted efforts bore fruit when Eddie received a job offer from a nearby store, a role that not only offered financial stability but also marked the beginning of a promising new chapter in his life. With a job secured, the focus shifted to finding Eddie a suitable living arrangement. Charles and Aaron accompanied him to various apartment viewings, helping him navigate the rental application process. The day Eddie signed the lease for a quaint and comfortable apartment was a celebratory moment for everyone involved. Eddie was overwhelmed with gratitude and a palpable excitement as he embarked on a fresh chapter in a space that he could finally call his own. This marked the beginning of a stunning transformation. He soon became an integral part of the lives of Charles, Aaron, and particularly Zoe. Affectionately adopting the moniker Uncle Ed, he was a constant presence at Zoe's school activities, cheering her on from the sidelines, and relishing the weekend spent with the family in the local park. His deep-seated appreciation for the family's steadfast support flourished into a deep and reciprocal love that significantly enhanced everyone's lives, just as profoundly as it did his own. Do you have any thoughts after hearing the above story? Tell us in the comments section. We'd like to hear your thoughts. That's for today's story. Please subscribe and give a thumb up. See you next time.